All right, we're back. So this weekend we're in Edmonton, and for my V-blog, we're going to interview the truckies. And uh, so we have Dino here to my left and Mikey to my right. And I guess the first question for each of you, which I think is a pretty similar story, but how did you get started in racing? We'll ask Mikey first, and I'll hand it over. I uh, was working for my brother-in-law doing some excavating and snow removal, and uh, I had my CDL, and I knew the, know the team manager, John TZ. And uh, I started uh, as a temp driver doing um, uh, fly-ins. I'd fly in, drive a truck home, or I'd uh, um, drive a truck out and fly me home, stuff like that, temp stuff. And then a full-time position opened up, and um, I uh, got into it. Do you know? Um, See, I thought, I thought you were going to answer Domino's Pizza, but that's why I said similar story. <laughs> uh, I've been in the restaurant business all my life, and uh, we owned our own uh, bar in uh, Chicago, me and my wife. and. Uh, finally decided to sell it and I wasn't doing much and uh, I knew TZ from coming into the, the restaurant and uh, he came in one time and called me up. I was actually in Vegas on vacation with my wife and he said, hey, can you uh, help us get to Mexico next week? And uh, so it was a kind of a temp deal too. Started out, did a couple races at the beginning of the year and one of the other drivers left and got hired on full time. It's been five years. And what requirements are there to be a truckie? Uh, Got to have a lot of patience. <laughs> Uh, you obviously got to have your CDL, your Class A CDL license, and uh, uh, you're pretty much always hurrying up so that you can wait somewhere. Okay, so Edmonton, I would imagine everybody knows this, but Edmonton is miles from anywhere. And so these guys drive, what, it's 1,600 miles or something from Chicago to here. So first of all, on a long trip like that, what do you do to, to kill time? And then I'm going to ask both of you if you have any interesting stories about your driving partners. To kill time, is uh, you got to drive, you got to get here. Uh, 1,600 miles. Uh, I did it solo this time, um, so you got to have a required amount of time off down downtime. So I left Monday morning. I arrived here Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so it's you know you're a lot of just you're either driving or you're sleeping in the truck. It's about it. Well, you're alone this time, but I know normally you drive a Shep. So you got any good stories for us? I drive with Shep. We call him Dad. Uh, I drive with him. I, I, he's my roommate. He's the old guy, if you couldn't figure that out. Yeah, the old guy, the father figure of the team. And uh, I see a lot of Shep. Actually, I'm with Shep more than I am my own family. Uh, uh, he's a really great guy, but he's usually my co-driver, and uh, we get along great, so he's, it's nice. Do you know you? Uh, you know, for uh, me, I drive with uh, Mark. He's my co-driver. I spend the second season driving with him. And uh, Best thing, and same with Mark, I room with him on the road and we drive together all the time, so I definitely see Mark more than I see uh, most of my family also. But uh, best thing about Mark is he always likes to drive the night shift, so I can usually turn the wheel over to him at about 1, 2 in the morning, and at that time period when the sun's coming up, when I absolutely hate to be driving, he loves it, so it works out great. <laughs> all right, so I guess the final thing, because we've done two trips to Canada now in the past two race weekends, any interesting border stories? You know what, this time around, uh, these, both these past two trips have been uh, pretty easy. The, the border crossings was very, very easy. A few questions and uh, on the way through. The first time we came up here was the, uh, the one year where we all got pulled in and asked questions for an hour. I think each one of us got pulled in and interrogated for an hour. Like, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, that was a long time we sat there at the border waiting to get through that mess. Mike, I'd imagine the same. So why don't you tell them what we have to, the inventory that you got to carry to, uh, so that they can look when you hand over to customs. Yeah, a form has to be signed on the U.S. side when we come here into Canada. Uh, it's a, a manifest called 4455. Um, they can look at it on the U.S. side, uh, make sure, yeah, this is what you got. Uh, the, like this time, they just checked the VIN number on the truck and the, the trailer. Uh, I wasn't carrying any cars this time. I just had the truck with all the equipment in it. So uh, he, he wanted to come out and see the cars, and I said, I'm sorry, there's no cars. He goes, okay, we'll just check the VIN. And uh, it, it's nice because that, that's all they really want to see is the cars. So it was a, a breeze coming through. Uh, it wasn't too bad. All right, well, there you have it, guys. So these are two of our four truckies. As Mikey said, some of them will drive alone at times. They have a lot of interesting stories. I can tell you that. Some of them we can't just share. That's why they're pretty hush-hush when you ask them. But they're all good guys. This is one big family. you got to remember that. And go Michigan. No, no, no. <laughs> He's actually both of these guys are Michigan fans, so that's it.